Why my job? Cuba was one of the first countries to respond when Ebola struck West Africa. It sent hundreds of health workers, perhaps not surprising given its long-term commitment to the continent. Cuba has trained hundreds of African doctors and nurses in its prolific medical schools over many years. To many Africans, the island nation is an old friend and Fidel Castro a hero. As far as I see, if it's not for their agenda, it's not for them. You understand? This man was the first, the first country to go to Africa when the Ebola strike. Did you hear that, family? The first country to go. You understand me? And this is what they want you to believe about this man. That he's some kind of communist. That he's some kind of criminal terrorist. Listen to what this next guy said about him. Edward Siago. Listen to this quickly. There's no question in our mind, and we have been warning the country about this since 1975, and the country has now come more so to believe our view than the opposite view contended. That Manley's ultimate aim is to take Jamaica into the Cuban orbit and to transform the society into a Cuban-type society. They have, in fact, implemented many of the types of institutions that are necessary for the transformation. What sort of thing? Training programs. We have, for instance, some 1,000 Jamaican youths that have now been trained in Cuba under a program that has come to be known as the Brigadista program. Because the purpose of the program is to set up Marxist-Leninist brigades to return to Jamaica to indoctrinate the peasant people and the working class people. I wonder if you hear what this guy is saying, guys. Yeah? I wonder if you listen carefully what he's saying. If he was watching from the beginning, yeah? Castro, Fidel Castro and their organizations have chained hundreds of doctors and nurses. Hundreds. This is what I'm saying. Hundreds. Why? In Africa. Why would they be doing that if they're not helping the society and help them to sustain themselves? They don't have to be running to no one to ask for anything. You understand what I'm saying? But this Edward Siago, they're still doing it to us now. The JLP is still doing it to us now, blindsiding us, guys. Well, listen to this again, yeah? It was a quite special contribution, I will say, uh, coming from a country that is not part of Africa, from another continent, and sharing with us, sharing their blood with us. Thousands of Cubans died with us. This is what America was afraid of, losing control over Jamaica. They had too much invested in our country, guys. Too much invested in our country. You understand me? These guys is sending soldiers to die for a country that they don't know. To die for a country that they haven't got no kind of ties with like that. They're only friends. This is what they are, friends and compadre. But the Americans didn't like this. Listen. The Cubans only wanted to see freedom and an end to the treatment of Africa as a playground for powerful nations while people suffered. And this is what Norman Manley was fighting for, for us Jamaicans which we was so stupid to under I wouldn't call us stupid, basically, because the American and the JLP came together and suffer us. We had to suffer. We felt hunger. We felt pain. You understand me? So we had to go over to their side. They know that they got enough money to just restart the country just like that. And they did it. They suffer us out and did it. So we're not independent no more. Take all our minerals, take everything from us. <sighs> Family, we need to wake up and see, wake up. Listen. Victory in Angola shattered the illusion of white invincibility, led to independence for Namibia, an end to apartheid in South Africa, and freedom for Nelson Mandela. 
And this was bad for our country. Why? Why, ask yourself, why was this so bad for us Jamaican to have our own independent? Don't have to be depending on the bigger countries to look after us. Please understand and ask yourself, why? Why was it like that? It wasn't the PMP that was doing this. It wasn't manly. It was not manly. They needed someone that they could control, which was the JLP family. Listen. Today in Manly's Jamaica, the wrong people assert more influence than the United States, or anyone else for that matter. Ulysses Estrada, the Cuban ambassador, has the biggest diplomatic staff in the country. It's said he's a senior officer in the Cuban Secret Service. Here, he's visiting a school being built by a large Cuban workforce. It's part of a massive aid program which includes hospitals, clinics and nurseries. The money comes from Cuba. So as you can see, Manly was going in the right direction. It was pushing Jamaica in the right direction. But it's because of people that don't want Jamaica to be an independent state that don't have to take any bull from them. They're fighting him down. They're fighting him down. Hospitals are getting built. Dr. Sergius are getting built. Everything was getting into where it needs to be. But if it's not in the bigger as inches, guys, it will not happen. They don't want it to happen like that because they want to rip the hell out of Jamaica. They want to take everything from us. And they actually did it now. They done it now. You understand me? They have the cheek to say, right, that Castro was some kind of villain. They, put, they make him out to be some kind of villain. You want to hear what, listen what this guy said. The threats that America sent to Manley, I don't know how he didn't crumble, but listen to this. Mr. Manley's association with uh, Fidel Castro may be one of the prime reasons uh, that uh, many uh, bankers have turned down his request for the borrowing capacity for Jamaica, why their tourism is a low ebb, uh, why the economy is on the brink of disaster. Uh, these are the prices sometimes uh, people have to pay for their association with the wrong people. They want us to believe that this man was the devil, guys. We need to open our eyes. This guy has been doing so much for the African continent and wanted to start doing the same for Jamaica as well. But they see, they saw that it was going to be not in their interests. So they had to fight him out, fight us down. And we're not going to take it anymore. You understand me? You hear what he said? That's what you face for being in contact with the wrong people. This is what we went through, guys. Have a look. Without foreign exchange, Jamaica is running out of the basic commodities people need to live. What things are you short of here? Um, the basic commodities, rice, flour, codfish, oil, bread. No bread? No bread. Is this a typical day? Yes, it's a typical day. Why can't you get the things? Well, it's all due to the economic situation in the country. I haven't got any foreign exchange. The railway line runs through a slum in the middle of Kingston. This is Manley's power base. Ironically, his supporters have suffered more than any from the collapse of Jamaica's economy. Once they had very little, now they've nothing at all. Yet they're fiercely loyal to the man regarded by the poor as a saviour. What would you do for Michael Manley? For Michael Manley? Yeah. I'd have moved the world for Michael Manley, for the people's man. Yeah. Him see the people, him see the struggle of the people. So you see what our ancestors had to go through. Enough of our great grandmothers, great great grandfathers, what they had to go through at the hands of the JLP. 
Manly was fighting for our, fighting for our sanity, fighting for our future. You understand me? So we don't have to be controlled as we are now. Because face it, we are controlled. You understand? But listen to this next bit again, guys. When a country goes broke, its people go broke with it. Unemployment is now around 30% and factories are closing down daily. At this plastics factory, workers have been laid off and half the remaining workforce sits idle, the machines covered up. Without foreign exchange, the company cannot import raw materials. The Bank of Jamaica is broke, 130 million pounds in debt. On the walls of Kingston, Manly's opponents know where to put the blame. IMF is Manly fault. And this is what they wanted to believe. You understand me? Sometimes you have to go through the rough to get to the smooth. And this is what Manly was trying to let us know. But we collapse under pressure. We did collapse under pressure, guys. But now is not the time to put the blame game. And they actually blamed him for the society crashing, for everything going to the dirt. He has got a little bit of play in it. He has, as I said, he was looking for the interests of the Jamaican people. They had to send in the CIA, listen, listen, the CIA, listen to this, and listen to the lie, the blatant lie that this guy told right in front of her face. Listen. Are you saying the CIA was operating here? The, our impression is that the CIA had a hand in what happened in 1976. In that what was way? our information. Well, in the way, for instance, that they would have done in Chile. Nobody denies it in Chile. It's always denied in Jamaica. Mr. Manley told me that he thought there was a deliberate policy of destabilization uh, from the United States to get rid of him. Well, I hope that that makes better politics in Jamaica, that it makes sense with regard to the United States. It's not true. It's not true. Am I the only one that saw that smirk in his face, guys? They're trying to take people for fools. This is what they're trying to do. And they always have their hands in the Jamaican politics. You understand me? From back in them times, listen to this. Li just listen closely to how these guys speak about how they get their moles in Parliament that they can do whatever they want. Listen. I feel that, uh, as many others do, that uh, Mr. Manley may have a tough time surviving the next election if indeed uh, there is an election. Would it suit American interests if he didn't survive the next uh, election? Well, based on his uh, current reaction to the American government, uh, I feel that it would probably would be in the best interest if uh, someone other than Mr. Manley uh, were in a position to uh, govern uh, the country of Jamaica. American support is solidly behind Manley's opponent, Edward Siaga. And this is why they're angry. Because they cannot control Manley like how they can do any other one from the JLP. And that's what they're doing up till today. They, they came down to make... You remember the other day they came to do these policies and all these kind of stuff. They have to accept it. Jamaica has to accept it, no matter what we protest in this, protest in that. They have to accept it because the deal that they made from back in them times. Listen. Comrades, all I can say, the international community has been run by the big powers for hundreds of years, and where are we? Where are we? Well, first of all, I've never supported Dr. Castro and his causes. I've discovered points where we have similar causes. We share causes. I don't support his causes, nor he mine for that matter. But that the relationship has contributed to and been the cause of strain with the United States, of that there's no question. It's a matter of principle. Why did you do it? I, I mean, because it is a matter of principle. Because to me it is an absolute matter of principle and it isn't negotiable and it will never be no matter what price is paid. It is not negotiable for me to believe that a small country has to determine its policy by reference to what some powerful neighbor feels. And this is why 
they had to get Manly out, guys. This is why they had to get him out. You understand me? Because he was looking out for the interests of us Jamaicans. He was. Even though somehow no blood it might be saying oh did no, he was looking to what the man is saying. Exactly looking to what he's saying. He's only caring about the Jamaican people and their riches that they could have up to today day, which we don't have anymore. Because all our backside and everything is gone now. It's gone. We ain't got no control over it anymore. Listen this. Upsetting Jamaica's powerful neighbor seems to have been a manly speciality. When he came to power in 1972, he moved into head-on conflict with the interests of American big business. Bauxite is big business. It's the raw material from which aluminium is made. It's only found in a handful of countries, and Jamaica has two billion tons of it. Before Manley came to power, the entire Jamaican bauxite industry was controlled by six North American companies. The country's greatest natural asset belonged to someone else. And this is the kind of stuff that Norman Manley Anna Castro was fighting for, for us, the Jamaican people. And America did not like that, none at all. No, 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 no. They want to be in control. They're in control even up until today, day, guys. And you should have, you have to believe that, believe that they're still in power. They're still pulling the strings. They're still pulling the strings. Without us, we won't see change. This is what we need to get in our head. Without us, we won't see change. All them things that's been on is gone and passed already. But we're supposed to look back in it and see sense. Let's carry on. The Jamaicans received only a pittance in royalties, about $40 million a year. Do you take a similar view of America? Um, no, I don't think we take an, a, a, a similar view of America. I think they have, of course, a very um, unusual and painful experience. Do you think that your support of uh, Dr. Castro and a certain number of his causes, um, that having Cubans here, has helped to antagonize the United States towards? As a family, as you can see, I will never stop saying that the PMP is for the people. Therefore, the people, they always have the people at heart. They always have Jamaica at heart. And that's my piece for now, guys. Much more to come. Like, share, and subscribe. Send this to whosoever, as many people as you know. You have to send this over to them so they can see exactly what has been going on in our country. Thank you again, guys. Dr. Cookie, out. There is great hostility among certain elements of their system. You'll find elements in their Congress that are hostile about Jamaica as this friend of Cuba and non-aligned country and third world business, you know, and all this. All this happens. And certainly that has had a tremendous effect on investment. It has slowed down investment and we paid high prices. To me, it's just, there's just no point to the world if everybody is going to have to compromise every principle they believe in merely because some big neighbor might get vexed.